My name is Daniel Gomez from MD Anderson Cancer Center, and I'll be presenting the results of our phase two randomized trial, examining the role of local consolidative therapy in the setting of oligometastatic non-small cell lung cancer. So retrospective and preclinical studies have provided evidence for a limited metastatic phenotype. However, these studies often have inherent biases, and thus the treatment and the role of aggressive local therapy is controversial in this subset of patients. There have been no reported randomized studies that have addressed this question. We conducted a phase two randomized study involving three institutions, MD Anderson Cancer Center, the University of Colorado, and the London Health Sciences Center in Canada. The study opened in December 2012 and major eligibility criteria are listed here. A histologic confirmation of non-small cell lung cancer, stage four disease, no rhesus progression after frontline systemic therapy, no more than three metastasis after frontline systemic therapy, and the absence of a malignant pleural effusion. The definition of frontline systemic therapy was as follows. At least four cycles of platinum doublet chemotherapy, at least three months of erlotinib, afatinib, or gefitinib therapy if an EGFR mutation, and at least three months of crizotinib therapy if the patient harbored an EML4 ALK fusion. Here you see the trial design. Patients were enrolled at two different time points, either before or during frontline systemic therapy or after frontline systemic therapy, at which point they were randomized. They were randomized to one of two arms, either local consolidative therapy, which included either surgery and or radiation, or no local consolidative therapy, which was the standard of care arm and included maintenance chemotherapy or in some cases such as squamous cell carcinoma observation. These were the statistical considerations for the trial. Um, the median pro progression-free survival endpoint in the standard arm was hypothesized to be four months, and in the experimental local consolidative arm, hypothesized to be seven months. Thus, at a type one and type two error of 10%, we anticipated a total number of 94 randomized patients over a period of 36 months with nine months follow-up. The study was reviewed annually by our Data Safety Monitoring Committee. At the DSMC review in January 2016, the study was closed due to an observed efficacy in the experimental arm after the randomization of 49 patients. At this time, the median follow-up for PFS was 18.7 months. Here we see the PFS outcomes. One patient in, each, in the local consolidative group was un, un, inevaluable, therefore 24 patients in each group were analyzed. Of these 48 patients, the median progression-free survival time in the no local consolidative therapy arm was 3.9 months, very similar to our hypothesized progression-free survival time of four months. However, the LCT arm exceeded our hypothesized time of, a, of seven months, and, and, was, and these patients had an 11.9 month PFS time. Thus, the difference was highly statistically significant. There were 14 total deaths in the study. However, the median overall survival time was not reached in either arm. Thus, the data is not yet mature and patients continue to be followed for this endpoint. We have performed two exploratory analyses. In the first, we removed patients with EGFR and ALK alterations to ensure that the PFS benefit remained, and indeed it did, with a hazard ratio of 0.41. In the second exploratory analysis, we generated a new variable called time to new site failure, given that the patients that did not receive local consolidative therapy may have a predilection to developing failure in the known sites of disease, not receiving radiation or surgery to these sites. When doing so, we found that the time to new site failure did substantially differ between the two arms and was statistically significant, with 11.9 months in the LCT arm and 5.7 months in the no LCT arm. So in conclusion, patients with oligometastatic non-small cell lung cancer who do not progress after frontline systemic therapy experience a benefit with improved progression-free survival when given local consolidative therapy. In an exploratory analysis, we found that LCT also increased the time to development of a new lesion, suggesting a reduction in metastatic spread by treating the known sites of disease. In results that aren't so shown here, we found that LCT was also associated with acceptable toxicity without any grade four or five events and without substantial differences in the toxicity compared to the no LCT arm. The overall survival data is not mature and patients continue to be followed for this endpoint. Thank you very much for your attention for allowing me to present these results today.